Welcome traders to today's introductory session to trading the micro e-mini S&P 500 futures. Um, my name is Patrick Munley <clears throat> and I will be uh, walking you through this topic today. Um, before we get going, uh, just some housekeeping here. Can you first of all uh, just confirm that you can see the welcome screen and you can hear my audio feed loud and clear. Uh, could you just type a Y into the chat box so that uh, I know we're ready to get going? Good stuff. Okay. Um, and just in terms of uh, questions, any questions you might have, if you could just make a note of the questions that, uh, that come up uh, during the presentation and at the end I'll open it I'll open up a uh, Q&A session which uh, will allow you to post those questions <coughs> either to type them into the the chat or I can unmute your uh, microphone if you have one and you can speak to me directly okay so like I said welcome to today's introductory session to the e-mini and micro S&P contracts. In today's session, I'll be introducing you to the instrument structure and advantages, along with highlighting some unique market mechanics that enhance the trading information for this product. I will also introduce you to my core strategy for trading e-minis and demonstrate how you can consistently use my pre-market analysis to reap consistent returns. But before we jump into that, let me just briefly introduce myself for those who uh, are joining me for the first time today. Like I said, my name is Patrick Munley, and after I graduated from King's College London, I joined a City PLC consulting firm. I ultimately left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup, which was focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. Having a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the markets, sometimes quite literally overnight, I decided to explore my curiosity for markets. With some capital to play with and some time on my hands, I started day trading the S&P 500, or probably more appropriately, day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my, uh, my beginner's luck ran out, and as the market phase changed, I began to average down, giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure financial hit. To say this was a gut-wrenching, sobering experience is an understatement. I had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years, it was a time during which I upped not just my technical gain, developing a strategy that crucially suited my personality, uh, extensively back and forward testing strategies, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably the most important watershed shift I made was from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades, because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. From 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've also mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Ticno. My other passion project, I guess, is leading trader education for a premier trading education brand called fxcareerswap.com offering development and more importantly, funding to retail trading talents. At FX Career Swap, we don't just work on uh, 
developing retail traders market and trading strategy knowledge. More importantly, we also work on mindset development through a structured program that culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. Okay, so that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. So let's jump into today's material. The E-mini or ES or mini is a futures contract that tracks the S&P 500 market index. It is traded on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, the CME, via their Globex electronic trading platform. Trading is 23 and a half hours a day, five days a week, using the contract symbol ES. E-mini contracts are available on a wide range of US stock market indices, commodities, and Forex currencies. However, when traders refer to the E-mini or the E-minis or the SPOOs, they are generally referring to the most important one, the futures contract that tracks the S&P 500 stock market index. The E-mini futures were originally launched in September 1997 to attract non-professional investors into trading index futures. Previously, the only game in town had been the large S&P contracts, but it had become too expensive for the little guy to trade. So the CME created the E-mini contract, which was one fifth of the size of the large S&P futures contract and required only one fifth of the margin to trade. The E-mini became a huge success, not only with non-professional traders, but also with professionals too. The micro E-mini futures contract is the same as the regular S&P 500 E-mini contract in every respect, except it's one tenth the size. That is, each one point move in the S&P 500 index is worth $5 per micro E-mini contract compared to the $50 for the E-mini or the ES. <clears throat> and obviously the margin to trade the micro contract is also one tenth of the size. And let's think about some of the, uh, the benefits of this product. It's equally easy to go long or short. You can either buy or sell the current E-mini contract and there is no uptick rule. We have 24 hour trading, which makes the E-mini attractive to traders around the world. Overnight moves in related equity markets like the DAX or the FTSE can be played with one trading vehicle. The electronic trading platform means your orders are entered instantaneously and when executed, you're notified instantaneously. Changing and cancelling orders is trivial. No phone call required to brokers anymore. It's a level playing field because the Globex electronic trading platform means that large and small traders have equal access to the market and trades are executed in the order they are received. Unlike the days of old when the pit traded futures or equity, all the backroom gains are gone. It's a tight bid and ask spread because there's so much volume trading through the E-mini, the difference between the bid and ask price is only ever one tick or 0.25 index points, which is the minimum price movement. Like I say, there's a large depth of market. Again, the E-mini market is so liquid, there is plenty of volume either side of the last traded price for large orders to be filled with minimum slippage. It's volatile, yes, but not unmanageable. The E-mini is active every day, which gives the trader plenty of opportunity to trade. Remember, a sleepy market is impossible to day trade. But the E-mini volatility is also manageable, except maybe around major announcements like the FOMC or the non-farm payrolls data. The low brokerage rates mean that broker commissions for trading the E-mini continue to fall. This excludes exchange, clearing, and regulatory fees. And when you factor those in, your round trip in and out brokerage commission is very attractive. Low margin requirements mean that to open a trading position with Tipmill, you only require 1,000 US dollars to open a micro account. Remember, these are the absolute minimums. You should be trading with more capital behind your position. And there is a, a more attractive tax rate than trading Forex or stocks. And income trading um, from the E-mini futures is taxed as a capital gain. And you also benefit from no trade-by-trade -trade accounting, which is another advantage of the tax treatment of the E-mini futures, is that the tax reporting requirements are minimal. In particular, no trade-by-trade -trade accounting, only the net profit for the full year is needed. Okay, so that gives us uh, a sense of the um, the product and its advantages. And now we understand the instrument and the trading venue. I want to demonstrate some of the unique aspects of this instrument. The fact that the E-mini is a derivative of the S&P 500 allows us to access some unique information commonly referred to as market internals. 
Market internals are often compared to the instrument dashboard on a car, giving indication of the performance and alerting the driver to any issues occurring under the hood. So let's take a look more closely at what market internals are and how we can incorporate them into a consistent trading strategy. Firstly, volume. As unique features of trading the exchange traded derivative, as opposed to a contract for difference, or Forex volume data, which is at best incomplete. There is no central Forex exchange and the banks who dominate Forex trading don't share volume data in real time. However, we get a true reflection of the actual volume, which is shared directly by the CME available to all market participants in real time. I use volume as a tool to confirm breakouts and opportunities to fade the market. A spike in volume will often be accompanied by intraday profit taking. The next tool I use is the NYSE tick index. This gives us the relationship of stocks up ticking versus down ticking. The tick is an extremely useful tool for intraday trading. For example, if there are 3000 stocks trading on the NYSE and 1500 trade higher from their previous price and 500 trade lower, then the last price the tick will read will be plus 1000. But I guess you're thinking, well, what happened to the other thousand stocks? Well, it might be that they, traged, uh, they traded at an unchanged price from their last tick. When using the tick, we are looking for extremes to enter or exit a trade. Tick readings of plus 1,000 or minus 1,000 are considered very strong. And we typically trade between 1,000 most of the time on the New York Stock Exchange. Tick readings within the 400 level, plus 400 or minus 400, more often than not indicate chop and we want to ignore them. On a range day, we can look to fade tick extremes. Uh, I apply a moving average to make it easier for me to see the trend of the tick, the or what I refer to as the tick distribution. Um, and when we get a high tick and a high in price at the exact same time, this could indicate the high of the day. When a high tick prints without a simultaneous high in price, we can continue to make new highs until the new high tick is reached. And obviously the reverse is true for the low tick followed by new lows. The next tool I use is the advanced decline line or AD line for short. It's the second most important of the internals. This indicator tells us the net sum of advancing stocks minus declining stocks. There are roughly 3000 stocks listed on the New York Stock Exchange and 3000 on the NASDAQ. An AD line reading of plus 1,500 is very bullish, and a reading of over 2,000 is extremely bullish. On the flip side, readings of minus 1,500 and below are very bearish, and readings below 2,000 are extremely bearish. These extreme readings are indicative of trending days, where once the market continues to trend all the way into the close, we look to the AD line in conjunction with the breadth ratio to confirm these trend days. For example, a day with 2,500 advancing stocks and only 500 declining stocks will yield a net positive of plus 2,000, which is, as I say, an extremely bullish reading. It would take a large catalyst to shift the market direction with a reading this bullish. If on the open, you continue to see the advanced decline line moving, so it moves plus 500, plus 700, plus 900, this is a sign of market strength. <clears throat> if, however, the market is moving higher, but the AD line is moving lower, a divergence has occurred and could be a sign that the market is about to reverse. Last, but by no means least, the breadth volume ratio, composed of volume flowing into up stocks versus volume flowing into down stocks. The breadth volume ratio is expressed as up volume minus down volume. This reading is important in relation to where it has been, especially where we are now compared to where the day opened. So for example, if at 10 a.m. we have 10 million shares moving up and 5 million shares moving down, the resulting breadth ratio will be two to one positive. Twice as much volume is flowing into up stocks as down stocks. If at 10.30 a.m. the market has sold off, but we have uh, a breadth ratio of three to one positive, this is a signal that the markets are actually becoming stronger and it's time to look to buy into pullbacks for a long setup. So now we understand the market internals and the unique insight they provide, I want to briefly walk you through my strategy. By understanding the market context in which we are trading, I'm looking to execute two types of trades. 
Firstly, mean reversion in ranging environments, and then momentum trades in trending environments, always underpinned by the market internals. Every day, I plot pivotal support and resistance action areas that are derived from multi time frame market auction theory and volume profile analysis. This allows me to avoid engaging the market in areas of heavy rotation or chop. Support and resistance action areas have three purposes. They can act as entry levels in mean reversion setups, which is the majority of the time. In directional or trend environments, the action areas act to confirm momentum breaks. And lastly, they can be used as targets for trades. I also note additional key data from the prior day price action. These levels are often important to define the bias for the day. The previous volume point of control, the highest volume price from the previous day. This is where buyers and sellers perceive the price to be fair value for that session. I confirm the current market context. Uh, the, this lets us identify the dominant side of the market in the overnight session referred to as the Globex session. And then on a one to three day time horizon, a one to three week time horizon and a one to three month time horizon. There are times when neither side is dominant and it's important to assess how the cash session develops. I also highlight quantitative probability plays based on where the cash or regular trading hour session opens in relation to the prior days, either above or below or within the range. And these give key levels and the probability of price testing these levels over an extended data set. This can prove useful for trade entry, exit and trade management. Lastly, I note volatility or range analysis as this helps to inform the current market context. Is the market in balance in relation to current uh, volatility? Equally, we can confirm a market out of balance and this can inform bias for the tra trading session ahead. It also helps to inform trade execution and trade management. So what I want to do now is take you through a few examples of how the combination of the action areas, market internals and data deliver an edge in the market. So let's uh, pull up an example day here. <clears throat> so like I say, these, uh, the support and resistance levels are um, provided in advance of the cash session opening. So you have these before uh, the New York Stock Exchange opens at, uh, at 2.30 UK time. And so in, on this day, uh, what, what, you all, what I also provide is a short video which, in which I highlight the high probability setups I'm looking at. So from this day, I highlighted that um, because of the market context, we were bearish on the overnight session, neutral on the day time frame. Uh, what I was looking for here was a test and reversal from the initial resistance. So the markets opened up here, we traded into the initial resistance zone, and note that we had negative internals. So as we traded up into that resistance zone, the market under the hood was rolling over. We had a negative tick distribution, we had a negative advanced decline line, and we had negative breadth. So this was an opportunity to get short into the resistance zone. And then our target is the Globex session lows. Globex session is highlighted by this blue line here. And we traded down into that area for an 18.5 uh, point uh, trade to the downside. <clears throat> Another session where we opened up, uh, this session we were bearish and neutral to bearish on the near-term timeframes, but we were bullish on the longer-term timeframes. And price action uh, at the open here, I highlighted, was a very strong responsive buying, strong volume uh, in the bid. So the trade here was to play the breakout of the resistance. And notice we had these positive internals. So that was telling us that the underlying activity in the market was bid and we got the trade through the uh, resistance zone, primary resistance zone, up into the secondary resistance zone for a 10 point target. Next setup here, we were looking um, bearish on both the Globex and the near term bias was bearish as well. We got a break of primary support, which was the high probability trade that I uh, set that I highlighted in the pre-market analysis. We had negative internals, negative tick distribution. We actually traded down for a 28 point prof profit there into the third resist uh, the third support zone as highlighted in the pre-market analysis. Another session here, primary trade here was to play uh, because we were bearish to neutral in the near term timeframes. We're looking for weak market internals into primary resistance at short positions, which was the trade that we got. And we eventually traded down into the target zone 
for a 16 point profit. And again, based on these negative market internals as we traded into that resistance zone. Another setup here, we were bearish and looking for a uh, pullback to fade primary resistance. We traded into that area, we had negative internals, and so that was our signal to get short, and that traded down. Uh, there was actually 30 to 40 points of profit opportunity with that setup. So let's now jump, I'll just jump into the actual today's chart, and you can see uh, this was yesterday's um, setup, the primary high probability trade I highlighted in the pre-market video was to play for a break of primary resistance uh, based on uh, bullish internals. So we traded up into the primary resistance, internals improving, tick distribution uh, getting positive. And so the trade was long through the resistance zone up into secondary resistance. That was a 10 point trading opportunity there. Um, this was uh, Tuesday. The setup we were looking for here, again, primary high probability play highlighted in the pre-market analysis was to go long through 41.91 based on broad market strength. So we had really positive uh, internals here and we got the break through 41.91 and the target was secondary resistance up to 42.14 and that gave 23 points of profit as per the pre-market trade plan. Now, I won't keep going back over and over these examples because uh, I'm not a big fan of uh, hindsight, uh, hindsight trading, so to speak. So what I'd like to do actually now is, uh, is show you what the setup I'm looking at for today's cash session. So once I finish this webinar, I'll be recording a separate video, which um, I put into our futures group. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. But what I'm looking for today, based on the current setup, we're bullish on all our time frames. So what I what the trade I will be looking for today will be a break of uh, 42.50.50, which is primary resistance. And I'll initially be targeting a move up to 42.58. If I don't get an exhaustion signal there, so when I refer to exhaustion, that's a high tick of day with a high price coming at the same time and a potential volume spike. I'll hold the trade there to take us through 42.60. And then I'll be watching for a move up into 42.76. Now, equally, if we fail below the uh, 42.25, then I'll be watching for exhaustion signals alongside into this support zone here at 42.16 to set long positions. Uh, again, the initial target then will be the Globex lows, which would be 42.31. Through there, then I will target the Globex session high, which is currently 42.48. And again, I manage the trades by keeping an eye on the internals, making sure that we're not getting any exhaustion signals. So that high, new high in price for the day and a new high tick and a volume spike. As long as I don't get that, I'm happy to hold the trades and run them to the profit targets. So that's what uh, that's what I'm looking at for uh, for today's session. The only the only um, time I would consider getting short this market because of the bullish context that we've got will be on a break of uh, the 4202. If we get if we trade through there and we have very weak market internals, so negative breadth, negative AD line and a negative tick distribution all heading to the downside, then I'll be looking to be short through the uh, 4202 and my initial target on that downside trade will be 4187. Um, so those are the, the, the trades that I'm looking at, the three high probability plays I see developing uh, for today's cash session. Like I say, I record a pre-market video. I'm going to show you now the, uh, the Ticknell Futures Group, where I highlight uh, the setups for the day ahead. You get a recording every day before the cash session opens. I also provide other trading information for um, each session. I update the trades as they develop in, the, in real time in the strategy group. Um, and you can uh, get a two week free trial to the strategy group simply by registering uh, an, an, an account with Tickmill. Uh, you don't need to fund it during the trial period. So you can get two weeks of, of uh, seeing my trade analysis on a daily basis, seeing how the, how the market map plays out versus my pre-market analysis. And, uh, and you can get, I, I also post additional information from uh, major investment banks, giving you further market context every day so that you're constantly uh, getting a feed of institutional insights along with my uh, pre-market analysis so that you can then go away and execute these trades on your own. 
So I strongly suggest that uh, for all of you here today that you take advantage of the, uh, the, the two week free trial. What I'm actually gonna do is uh, I'm gonna post the link for that into the chat. And so you can, act, uh, you can actually request access. Uh, here we go. Uh, can you all see that link that, uh, that I've just posted in the chat there for the futures group? If you just type a Y in the chat box, if you, can, if you can confirm that you can see that link, it should be there for you all. Um, and all you do is request access and I will add you to the group and, uh, and you'll get uh, two weeks of uh, my pre-market trade analysis. I tend to deliver the analysis um, before 2 p.m. UK time, so you have plenty of time to review the information and set up for the, the trading session ahead. Like I say, the cash session begins at 2.30 UK time, so that gives you plenty of time to, uh, to set your trade levels uh, versus, my, uh, versus my analysis. Okay, well, that concludes uh, my presentation today. I hope that's given you a overview of the, uh, the contract the advantages of trading this contract using these market internals and also you can see how I can consist you can consistently uh, reap profits once you understand how these internals work and you familiarize yourself with them so at this point I will open the floor up for any questions so if you want to type the question into the chat box or uh, you want to unmute your mic I'm happy to do that we also have a Q&A box I think as well you want to type your question in there so I can cover these off um, if you have any. Equally, if you don't have a question, uh, if you could type an N into the chat box so that I know we're, uh, we're all on the same page here and I can, uh, I can wrap this session up. Yeah, I do give advice on trade management, um, Tim. Let me, just, uh, let me just show you here. So I, I've, I, I, I update when I'm in a when I'm in a position. I update the trade trading information through, uh, like you can see here yesterday. <clears throat> so I update the trades, update how I'm managing my position. I also give um, in this volatility data. I also suggest <clears throat> how you uh, should use your how how you should use stops based on. Uh, volatility. So if we're trading up into a reversion trade, so if I'm looking to get short uh, this resistance zone 42, uh, 42.45 to 42.50, I suggest a five uh, point stop given the current market volatility beyond, uh, so it'd be a 42.55 stop. Equally, if I'm playing a continuation, so if I'm looking to get long through the resistance based on the, the current market context, then I use something called a continuation stop. And that again is based on current market volatility and is statistically driven. And that's currently 7.5 uh, points. So I, I certainly do give um, trade, I, I, I give uh, the trading parameters. I, I'm very specific about the levels that I'm looking to, uh, to enter and exit trades. And I also suggest how you manage your stops. And then when in terms of the actual trade management, like I said, what I'm looking for um, to exit my positions, or more often than not, I'm, I'm either going to let them trade to the target, or if I get an exhaustion signal um, that suggests that there's a potential for a reversal against my current position, I will just cut the trade with whatever profits I have at the time that we, uh, we get an exhaustion signal. But like I say, I do, uh, I do update the positions in, uh, in the strategy group, so uh, you, can, you can always see pretty much how I'm managing my trades. Does that make sense, Tim? Well, this, I, I guess this is the beauty of it, really, Tim, that they, uh, it, it seems like there are a lot of indicators, but really what you're, all you're doing is you're, you know, if we're trading, if, if we're above the zero line for each indicator, so for the tick, the advanced decline line and breadth, if we're, if the, if the, if the moving average is above the zero line, that suggests that we were in a strong market environment. If it's below the zero line, that suggests we're in a, a weak market environment. So, where it, for example, if we if today we get down into um, this support zone that I just talked about, um, forty two oh two level, 
what I'd be looking for, if I'm going to get, if I'm going to sell the break there, what I want to see is the tick distribution, the, to the tick moving average trending down. I want to see the advanced decline moving average trending down and below zero. And I want to see the breadth trending down and below zero. Does that make sense? So you, you're just, it's, it's, a, it's, it's more of a confirmation than it is uh, that you need to, you know, you need to be watching every iteration. It's really a confirmation that you're getting from these internals uh, that allow you to, to play these trades with, uh, with, with confidence. So there's, there's, no, there's not a huge, once, you, once you've watched these um, for a few sessions and you, you, you get, you can just, you get familiar with the, um, the you know, the actual uh, distribution then really there isn't a huge, you know, like all the great trading strategies, they're pretty much principled upon um, some very simple premises. And this is what we're simply doing here is we're using uh, the internals to guide as to whether we want to play a, a momentum trade or a, or a reversion trade. This additional information here just helps in terms of where we are. So for example, today we're opening within range, uh, we're opening within the prior days range, currently we are anyway. And so what does that mean? Well, it means that when we open within range, there's a 73% chance that we test the midpoint. So the midpoint is running here. This is an automatic indicator that tracks the midpoint. So it's a high probability that if we open within yesterday's range, we're going to test the midpoint before extending higher. And so you can use that information because if we test the midpoint and then we break the prior high, that can give you an opportunity to get in on the long side in advance of breaking the resistance, uh, the primary resistance, where in that instance, I'd be looking to add to my position. So this information, again, once you're familiar with it and once you understand, are we opening within the prior day's range? Are we opening above it or are we opening below it? then it's very simple to use that, that information. The most important information really is this market context because that gives you uh, the setup for the day, the high probability setup for the day, and then you're just looking for the internals to confirm that. Good stuff. Okay, if there aren't any other questions, I'll, uh, I'll wrap this one up here. And I really do encourage you all to uh, request access to the Facebook strategy group. The link is in the chat and, uh, and I hope to see you all in there. Okay, thanks very much for your time, everyone. And I hope this helped.